من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. All praise and thanks is due to Allah. We once again praise Allah. We seek assistance and forgiveness from Allah. We seek refuge in Allah from our lower selves and from the wrongs we sometimes commit. Whoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. And we bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, the one who is unique and has no partners. And we bear witness that Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is a servant and messenger of Allah. <laughs> Indeed, we have given you abundance, <coughs> so ask of your Lord for this abundance and through the sacrifice. Indeed, your deriders will be reached. In other words, what Allah is saying that Allah has made <coughs> human beings or everything subjected to human beings. In other words, whatever we desire, we, our desires can be fulfilled if we only ask Allah if we show gratitude to that, but with that comes sacrifice. And we have to be willing to do the sacrifice. And if you have that equation correct, then no one can come in your way. Anyone who denies you or hates you for that, or wants to steal your dreams, in other words, they won't be able to stand your way. He who tells you that you cannot have everything you desire, or your heart's desire is a thief and an idol. Because universe, universally, and according to this verse, Allah has subjected everything to humans, needs and desires. We are the beings that rule the earth. But we are also <coughs> called upon Allah to be his vice chairman on earth. In other words, the Khalifa of Allah, which means that there comes a certain responsibility attached to all the um, the abundance that we can have. In other words, how do you, how do you preserve water? How do you um, prevent pollution and stuff like that? There's a certain responsibility towards that. And even with how does one use the resources, um, material resources that Allah has given us. And Allah has set up the system of abundance so whatever His servants earnestly ask for or require and sacrifice for, they will get it. And this speaks to the universal law that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. So whether you have negative things in your mind, if you conjure negative e e uh, things in your mind, it will translate into negative um, actions or negative results. <coughs> and vice versa, if you keep positive things in your mind, positive things has to flow from that. That's the universal law. So if you're not getting it, then something's wrong. You need to check it again. Hence we should ask, um, when, when we ask, we should not ask for material things, but we should ask for the things that material things can provide. Mm. For example, you don't ask for a house. You think, what does a house provide? It provides security. So therefore you ask for security. And you'll get the house, by the way. Can't you? Thank you. <laughs> And you don't ask for money, but you ask for the things that money can provide. For example, money provides stability, it provides sustenance. So you ask Allah for sustenance, and if sustenance means that it comes through in the form of money, then inshallah that is what you'll get. The universe responds to asking that is always for the greater good. It, it responds quicker to asking for the greater good than asking for selfish needs. So if you're asking for a BMW, you might wait a couple of years for that. <laughs> but if you ask for Allah to remove poverty, or Allah to grant love and happiness in your family, or children with the coolness of your eyes, or partner, or whatever, these things normally come quicker because they're not selfishly motivated. Hopefully they're not. So if you want happiness, you have to genuinely give happiness. If you want love, you have to genuinely be love, and give love, and exude love. And you also have to be sincere in your asking. In other words, you have to mean what you say when you ask Allah. 
because the universe does not respond to feelings. It vibrates with what the soul vibrates with. So you don't even have to open your mouth. The universe knows what you are asking. <coughs> so therefore you don't have to go like this because they're not even there. <laughs> they're all over. Right? The universe knows what is. Allah says that uh, Allah knows what is, in the, what is hidden in the hearts. So have you ever heard of the saying, if you don't like what you're getting, then change what you're doing? Even the Quran says, in Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bi'anfusin. That Allah will not change your condition for you until you make the effort to change it yourself. So if you don't like what you're getting currently, then see what it is that you have to change. What are those sacrifices that I need to make? Sometimes we need to check why is it that Allah is not answering our prayers. Have we done the necessary sacrifices? We need to sacrifice the things that stand in our way of our asking. <coughs> the universe answers all prayers. Therefore Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنَّ قَرِيبُ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّارِ إِذَا دَعَانِي فَيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي فَيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَهُمْ يَشْرُونَ Allah says that when my servants ask of me, I certainly answer them. But let them also answer my call which is they have to believe in me and they have to do the sacrifice so they have to do the inner work you can't just ask and not doing any inner work and expect Allah must answer you we need to check what it is that stands in our way of our prayer being answered is it our ego? is it our pride? is it our selfishness? is it our greed? Is it our need to be right? Is it our unwillingness to make those changes? <coughs> Sacrifice means to give up something of value for a higher purpose. So we now finish with one sacrifice, which is the, was the month of Ramadan. We're moving into another sacrifice now, inshallah, in the next two months, which will be Eid al-Adha, where people normally sacrifice animals. We're not saying that it's wrong to sacrifice animals. Uh, animals. The Quran allows us to, to do this. Uh, but yet even Allah says that um, It's not the animal's blood or the sacrificing of the animal that reaches Allah. It is the intention and the piety with which you do that sacrifice that reaches Allah. <coughs> so it, how much does it cost just to sacrifice a sheep? It's 350 rand. Is it really something of value that you're giving? Or would you have to give to sacrifice your pride and your ego? Isn't that more worth than 350? So those are the kind of things that we need to sacrifice. And when you do sacrifice a sheep, it's not the sheep that you sacrifice, mm -hmm. but it's what intentions you sacrifice. <coughs> Does it have any value? Does it lead to a higher purpose in the sacrifice that you're making? We attain selflessness through sacrifice. So one of the reasons why Allah wants us to sacrifice is to get out of that ego, is to get out of that self. So you become sort of more other-focused and not self, uh, just uh, self-serving. The word qurban, um, we all are familiar with the word qurban, but it's actually the origin of the word qurban is from, from Judaism. And in Judaism, <coughs> the word qurban means to give up something, to come closer to Allah. In other words, to, that leads to Allah consciousness. So hence, by denying yourself through sacrifice, one attains Allah consciousness. <coughs> Not much comes to us in life without endeavor or struggle. We gain only what we earn through our strivings. But Allah says that we have created man into trial and pain. So life is set up for trial and pain. So therefore the successful person and the successful leader is one who says that I have just finished my challenge, I've overcome it and I'm ready to, to see the next challenge. Because leaders know, successful people know that they will always be challenged. And the higher your, your aspirations, the higher the challenge, the more difficult the challenge is. And man shall attain nothing but that which he strives for. So nothing, Allah doesn't favor anybody. Even the prophets also, they are prophets, became prophets by the extent of their sacrifices. 
So whatever you want to attain in life, it will equal the, the amount of sacrifice that you're willing to give. Indeed, the richer the treasure desired, the greater the effort required. For example, if you want love, everyone wants love. Everyone needs love. <coughs> but how will you give love if you don't have a loving nature? If you don't have love for yourself? Um, if we fill our hearts with hate and despise for others, but yet we ask asking, oh Allah, grant me this and grant me that, <coughs> but we don't exude that kind of love. 